What's up everybody, I'm Jason and welcome back to some more tips and tricks for the Canon EOS R5C. So this is episode 8 and we are talking about basics again and this time we're going to talk about video compression, so the codecs and compression options that are available on the R5C. So this is the third video parallel and a series paralleling videos with the R5 tips and tricks and the R5C tips and tricks. So we did video resolution and then frame rate. Now we're talking about compression. Now this is not targeted at experienced Canon Cinema EOS users. You probably already know everything that I'm going to cover, and in fact, you probably aren't going to get much out of these videos. Instead, these videos are targeted at people like me. So somebody who either has just recently upgraded from an EOS R5 or another hybrid Canon Cinema, or another hybrid Canon camera, R6, whatever, or are considering upgrading to the R5C and are looking for some more information about what is going on in the camera. These are who's going to get the most out of these videos. So as I said, we're talking about compression and codec options today. So we're going to talk a little bit about RAW. We're going to talk a little bit about HDMI RAW, not because it's a codec as much as it's selected using the same menu system or menu. It's selected in the same place as you select your codecs. We're going to talk about XFAVC and MP4, the two compressed formats that are on the R5C. So let's start by talking about raw video. Now, R5C implements Canon's raw light codec. This is kind of complicated in some, a number of ways because Canon had a raw codec, now they have raw light. Uh, sometimes they don't call it raw light, they just call it raw video, and so things get a little bit confusing as to what's going on. On top of that, the actual implementation of raw video is more complicated than what most people want to present it as, although I'm not going to get into the weeds on that in this video. So here's the short of it. Raw video on the R5 is recorded in 12-bit, it's recorded at the native resolution of the sensor, and it's available in all of the sensor modes or crop modes that the R5 supports. So basically, there's minimal in-camera processing being done. The data being saved to the file is in the Bayer pattern so that it's not being demosaic and it's not being otherwise processed in that respect. It's not chroma subsampled, so it is uh, not being, at least not in the traditional sense of video. It does not have baked in pixel level adjustments for white balance or color curves. So whenever you make those adjustments in post, that would be the first time those adjustments would actually be being done mathematically. Now the big flip side to this whole discussion is that the quality of your raw video depends entirely on your post-processing software's ability to demosaic and render the files at a reasonable level. In my research doing this video, I found a number of people complaining that Adobe Premiere Pro does a very bad job at this, that DaVinci Resolve does a much better job at this. Uh, I've found mixed reviews for what, how, <clears throat> excuse me, for how well Avid Media Access and Final Cut Pro, both of which require a plugin to render these files that you can download from Canon, do. And of course, if you're using something else that either doesn't have a plugin from Canon or native support, Canon does have a Canon based raw development kit uh, software standalone program. It will develop the raw files into either DPX files, OpenEXR files, or if you're running it on a Mac, ProRes files using Canon's debayering and processing algorithm, and then you can edit those in your NLE the way you would edit the files normally. So shooting raw on the R5C, you have three codec options that you can choose from, the tune quality, HQ or high quality, ST or standard quality, and LT or light quality. These are the bit rates that are being used when you're shooting in raw. So for high quality, you have uh, files that are optimized or images. The, the optimization is to maximize image quality and this comes at the cost of file size. Another cost to shooting in HQ is that you cannot shoot HQ mode when you're shooting at full frame or 8K. I did some quick estimation on how much data that would actually require considering the bit rates that Canon uses for everything else. And it would be like somewhere around four gigabits per second for 30 frame per second video. And that's a number that Canon doesn't touch on any of their cameras for any of their settings. 
any, as with any of the tables in this video, I should note that there are some fields that are cells that are shaded in red. These file or fields require a CF Express card to save the data. It is too high of a bit rate to go to SD. So moving from down a level, sort of in terms of quality, you have raw ST or standard quality. This balances file size and compression. Targets, uh, the data rates don't necessarily drop too much in an absolute sense, but we now have the ability to shoot full frame at up to 30 frames per second at just under two gigabits per second data rates. Finally, the smallest or the, the most file size optimized raw compression algorithm is raw LT or light. Uh, this is aimed at minimizing the file size. It is the only option on the R5C where you can shoot 8K at 60 frames a second. It's almost 2.6 gigabits for that in, in this compression level. I should also note that this is the only setting anywhere on the camera where you can shoot 8K at 60 frames a second. None of the compressed options support that high of a frame rate. So the other raw compression option that you have on the R5 is to record externally over HDMI using HDMI RAW. So HDMI RAW is really not a codec in the sense that it's a compression thing going on in the camera, but it's selected that way, which is why I'm talking about it in this video. And I didn't talk about it in the R5 video, even though the R5 also supports HDMI RAW output. So HDMI RAW is essentially a non-standard way to send 10 or 12-bit RAW data over the HDMI cable to an external recorder. It does require a compatible recorder that understands how the camera is formatting the data. As, as far as I know, there is no standard for HDMI to carry raw data. It's only The standards are only for YCC compressed or YCC video data. So this is something that both the camera and the recorder have to know how to deal with. Right now, at least as far as I understand things, the only recorders that are capable of dealing with this properly are the Atomos Ninja 5 line. So the Ninja 5 and Ninja 5 Plus, there may actually be another larger screen, uh, Shinobi or Shogun or whatever, uh, that can also do this from Atomos, but it is Atomos recorders. You will need a Ninja 5 Plus to record 8K. The Ninja 5 can only record in 3K and 6K from the R5C. So, the way the R5C adjusts for handling all of this is if you were shooting in Super 16 mode, so 3K, then you get 12 bits and you can shoot up to 60 frames per second. If you were shooting in Super 35 mode, you get 10 bits and you can also shoot it up to 60 frames per second. And if you were shooting in full frame or 8K mode, then you get 10 bits and you can shoot at a maximum of 35 frames per second or 30 frames per second. Additionally, the R5C can record simultaneously to a card in the camera on a second card recording so that you have an in-camera backup or proxy file being generated in case of failure somewhere in the chain. Now, obviously, raw files are big, whether you're recording them in camera or not, which brings us to the compressed formats, XFABC and MP4. So XFABC is Canon's professional grade AVC uh, compressed file format. It is a Canon standard as far as I understand things that exactly how this is uh, done. Sony has their own standard. Panasonic has their own standard. Essentially, it uses AVC or H.264 compression in an MXF file that is with four channel audio and a bunch of other things. Uh, However, the exact resolutions and chroma subsampling are specifically limited or specific for the XFAVC format that you don't see in MP4 or something like that. So, unfortunately, shooting XFAVC on the R5C limits you to a maximum of 4K resolution. There is no 8K option, and Canon didn't extend XFAVC for the R5C to enable an 8K option. Everything you shoot in XFAVC is going to be 422 chroma subsampled and at 10 bits. You do have options for both intra and inter or long gop compressed video. So you can choose between that. There also are some interlaced options at certain uh, configurations that are available if you need those as well. And generally speaking, Keeping with that professional touch, the bit rates used by XFAVC tend to be quite high. In fact, they tend to sort of approach raw in some cases. 
So there are some pros and cons to using XF AVC. Obviously, high bit rates coupled with AVC compression means that you have very good image quality in the files. Uh, however, the high bit rates do mean you have very large files. Additionally, the combination of AVC compression 10-bit color and 422 chroma subsampling means that there is extremely limited support for hardware decoding of these files. It's possible that Apple's M1 chips can decode them in hardware. Otherwise, pretty much nothing else can, and I've never seen any actual documentation confirming that the M1s can decode these as well. So if you're running Intel GPUs or CPUs, if you're using NVIDIA or AMD, none of those support this combination used. Now, in my experience, the files will play back. They can be decoded on a CPU reasonably well, especially the intra-framed versions, uh, but it is going to cost more CPU overhead to play the files back while you're editing them. So these are the bit rates used by XFABC when you've selected intra-frame compression. So these are standalone frames. Again, resolution only goes up to 4K. Maximum bitrate is 810 megabit, which is going to require a CF Express card for 50 or 60 frames per second content. But otherwise, XFAVC can be recorded to an SD card. For long GOP or IPB compression, again, up to 260 megabits for uh, 60 frame per second 4K video drops as low as 24 megabits for 720p at 60 frames per second on the low end. Now the other option for compression is MP4. So MP4 is sort of more consumer oriented in some respects, but it also ends up being a little bit more flexible in what the camera can do with it on the R5C. So there's two codecs that are used when shooting in MP4 mode. These are AVC or H.264, the same as what XFAVC uses, as well as HEVC or H.265. So that's uh, HEVC is a more efficient compression algorithm compared to AVC, so it will help get file sizes down or quality up. Additionally, when shooting in uh, MP4 mode or using the MP4 modes, you have a choice between 422 and 420 chroma subsampling. So this can make a difference for, say, proxy files, hardware decode, or generally even just I shoot everything in 420 because I don't really need the extra color data for these kinds of videos. Uh, it just isn't necessary. And of course, because it's 420 HEVC, the uh, compression is something that is accelerated on pretty much all GPUs that support HEVC. Additionally, you have two choices of bit depths. Uh, you could shoot in either 8-bit or 10-bit. Now, I do want to note that 8-bit is only available in the 420 AVC configuration. Otherwise, everything else, else is 10-bit. But if you just need small files and you don't need a huge amount of quality and fidelity, 8-bit is an option and you can do pretty much everything with it. Additionally, all, as I said, all of the MP4 options are long GOP or IPB. There unfortunately isn't an all I option for shooting in MP4. So if you do want all I compression, you will have to use XFAVC. Now the big difference between XFAVC and MP4 ultimately comes down to the availability of shooting in 8K. MP4's files will shoot all resolutions, including H 8K, while XFAVC on the R5C does not have an 8K option. So unfortunately, you can't do 8K intra, or, yeah, 8K intra frame compression or all I compression on the R5C, which is actually something you can do on the R5. So little quickly note on pros and cons of dealing with MP4s. So obviously, between the combination of HEVC and uh, intra or long GOP compression, the files do come at a cost of some added computational complexity when you're talking about down uh, or decoding and playback. As things currently stand, only for two, the only GPUs that hardware accelerate 422 chroma subsampled HEVC are Intel's 11th gen and newer CPUs plus their Intel Arc GPUs, as well as Mac M1 GPUs and M2 GPUs, I believe, can also play back hardware accelerated 422 video. Uh, that said, even though HEVC is more computationally complex than AVC, in my experience on my six-year-old workstation slash desktop PC with an Intel i7-8700K CPU in it, 
I can play back pretty much anything more than, well, well, reasonably well, well enough, I should say, that I don't run into an awful lot of issues in terms of playback performance. So quickly looking through the bit rates for MP4s at 422 and 10 bit using HEVC compression, they max out at 540 megabit for 8K at 30 frames a second, and they drop as low as 12 megabit for 720p at 60 frames per second. Stepping down in chroma subsampling to 420, but still staying at 10 bit and using HEVC, the, the bit depths drop as you would pretty much expect, saving or reducing the chrominance data. So 30 frame per second, 8K goes from 540 megabits down to 400 megabits, and 720p at 60 frames a second goes from 12 down to 9. Uh, finally, in 8-bit 420, 8K is not available in this configuration. So the highest end you go is 4K at 50 or 60 frames a second. So that's 150 megabits there. And on the low end, 720p at 50 or 60 frames per second is 8 megabits on the bottom end. So let's talk a bit briefly about changing the method, compression method on the camera. And no surprise, three ways to go about doing this pretty much the same as we've been talking about for a lot of the settings in the past couple of videos. So the first option is to go through the menus. For this, you're going to go to the setup uh, media recording menu number one, and you're going to look, or page one, and you're going to look for the main record format setting there, and you're changing your setting there. Second option is direct touch control. So this is tap the direct touch control virtual button on the lower left corner of the screen, then tap the record settings virtual button on the upper left corner of the screen, switch to page two so you can swipe, you can use the multi-controller or a dial on the back of the camera to get there, and you're looking for the main record format setting there. There should also be a similar setting on page three for your secondary recordings when you can change uh, settings for that independently. Finally, you can program a button to take you directly to the main record format in the menu settings. You are going to use the generic button action, so the menu user setting button function and point it to the menu that you are wanting to go to. So in this case, again, it'll be the main record format menu setting. So that are, is the recording uh, compression options, algorithms, etc. on the R5C in a nutshell. If you found this useful or at least informative, let me know by hitting that like button. If this kind of thing seems like it might be your kind of thing, please consider subscribing if you're not already. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.